Welcome to AWS CDK Fundamentals course. This is a short and crisp course on AWS CDK. We will begin with understanding concepts behind CDK, followed by CDK installation. Then we will set up AWS account that we will use to deploy our stacks. We will also go through the sample app provided by AWS and also our custom project structure that we are going to follow throughout this course. We will also cover CDK bootstrapping. And finally, I'll explain how to provision custom VPC in our AWS account, followed by creating S3 bucket using CDK. So this is going to be really nice and quick introduction with AWS Cloud Development Kit. This course will provide you everything you need to get started with CDK. In this video, I will explain what is CDK. CDK, which is also known as Cloud Development Kit, is a software development framework which is created by AWS for defining cloud infrastructure. Its course commonly use programming languages like Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, and C hash, which means you can use any of these languages to start provisioning your infrastructure. You don't have to learn any other markup language or any other specific language for that. It uses CloudFormation in the background to provision infrastructure, which means whatever CDK code you write, it will be transformed into CloudFormation template and then gets deployed to AWS. CDK defines reusable cloud components, which are known as constructs. When we work on CDK project, we will see how to configure these constructs. A construct basically represents a single cloud resource, which means if you want to create S3 bucket, there is a construct for that, and you can use that to define S3 bucket. In this course, we will work on defining VPC and S3 constructs. Since constructs are the backbone of any CDK application, let's try to understand what a construct is. Constructs are primarily of two types, which are called high-level constructs and low-level constructs. High-level constructs are those which provide an abstraction layer for underlying AWS resources, which means there is a construct which is defined for AWS resources or AWS services, and we will use those constructs in the application to provision the resources. They also handle most of the heavy lifting and the logic required by CloudFormation resources. As I said earlier, CDK code will be transformed into CloudFormation template, but we don't have to define everything manually. We just define the code in any of the programming language that we want, and then that will be transformed into a template. We will be using high-level constructs for most of the time in this course. Low-level constructs are those which directly call CloudFormation resources. All such constructs begin with CFN keyword. Now this is true when we don't have high-level construct for some of the services or some of the features within a specific service. In that case, we will directly make an API call to CloudFormation service which starts with CFN and we can provision the resource. Now let's try to understand the CDK app lifecycle a bit. Here we have a construct which is basically called S3 construct and we use this construct to define S3 resource. So what we do in our application, we will import this construct and then whatever the configuration that we need to define for that particular S3 bucket, we define that. And once we are done with defining the parameters, we will synthesize the code and that will be transformed into a CloudFormation template. And finally, we can deploy that template using CloudFormation and that will create a CloudFormation stack. Now we don't have to deploy that using CloudFormation service. We will configure and deploy everything using CDK CLI. Before we start working on CDK application, first thing that we need to define is to set up AWS account and then set up IAM user, which we will use with CDK application. 
So first you have to log into your AWS account and then go to I am service. And then click on users. And let's create a new user. Let's call it CDK admin. And we only have to provide programmatic access to this user. And I'm going to provide administrator access to this user. And finally create the user. This is the only time that you can download your access and secret access keys. After this point, you won't be able to see your secret access key once again, and then you have to create a new key later on. So download the CSV file and save it on secure location. Once you download the credentials, you have to open the terminal and configure your AWS credentials. You must have AWS CLI installed on your system. If you don't have that, then you have to go ahead and download that first. And then run the command AWS configure. And it's a good practice to always define the new profile because you might be having multiple profiles in case you are working with multiple AWS accounts. So you always specify a separate profile name for every separate credentials. So let's call it CDK demo. And then put your access key here. And then copy your secret access key and put it here. Define the region, which is going to be US East 1. In your case, you can define whatever your nearest region is. So this confirms that you have configured your AWS credentials and you have created a new profile called CDK demo. So if I just run this command AWS STS get caller identity profile is going to be CDK demo. And then you can see here it shows that this particular profile is mapped with CDK admin user, which we created earlier. And this is your account ID. So it confirms that you have successfully set up your AWS credentials and we will be using the profile CDK demo when we work on CDK application. So that's all for this lecture. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to explain how to install and set up CDK. So first thing we need to do is to download Node.js. Based on your operating system, you can download appropriate installer and install that on your system. And the other thing we need to do is to install Python. As I said earlier, CDK supports multiple programming languages, but I'm going to use Python to write my CDK applications. So if you don't have Node.js or Python installed on your system, then you have to download both and install them first. In this course, I'm using Python 3.7. And you can simply check it using Python dash version. And I'm using NPM as well, which is of version 6.13. So I have both Node and Python set up on my system. And now I'm going to install CDK using NPM. So type NPM install AWS dash CDK dash G. Dash G means it's going to be installed globally. And hit enter. It will take a couple of minutes to install all the modules. Since I have already set up, it will take less time for me. And you can see the setup has already completed. If I type CDK dash dash version, it will list out the whatever version I have just installed, which is 1.42.0. So that's all you need to do in order to set up your CDK. That's all for this lecture. Thanks for watching. In this video, I will explain how to set up CDK project. By default, AWS provides a sample application for all the programming languages that CDK supports. So based on the programming language that you are working on, you can install that sample application. So first of all, let's begin with creating a directory. Let's call it CDK demo. And then run the command CDK init, which is basically means initialize and the sample app name. And then you have to define the programming language, which is going to be Python in our case. Now what this command does is it basically set up the sample app on your system. And it also comes with a default stack, which you can just play with. This is quite handy if you're just getting started with CDK. So once your sample app initialization has been done, you can see some of the commands that's listed here. The first one is CDK LS. It is used to list out all the stacks in your application. CDK synthesis or CDK synth in short. 
This is used to transform your CDK application code to CloudFormation template. CDK deploy is used to deploy your stack to AWS. CDK diff is used to figure out the difference between the current state of your stack and whatever changes that you have made. And CDK docs will just open up CDK documentation. So if you look at this directory, it contains multiple folders and files. The main file here is app.py. So this is kind of main function for the application. And then we have requirements.txt where you define all the CDK libraries and CDK modules that your application needs. Then we have CDK JSON. This file is basically used to define what executable CDK should run. In this case, we have Python. And this executable also contains one parameter, which is app.py. As I said earlier, this is our default file. We will define configuration of all the stacks in app.py. And then Python is going to read that file and then list out all the stacks and further synthesize it and finally deploy it. So we will see all these things once we start working on the project. So this directory structure is created by a CDK itself for the sample application. Of course, we are not going to use that in this course. So I'm going to create a new project directory, which is called CDK Basics. In this directory, as I said earlier, we need app.py file. So let's create a file called app.py. And then we also need a file called cdk.json. And finally, we need to create a file called requirements.txt. And another folder, let's call it stacks. So I will be defining all the stacks in my stacks directory. app.py is going to be the main application file for my project. cdk.json basically contains the executable which I'm going to use, which is Python. And requirements.txt will contain all the Python modules or CDK modules that I need to install as part of my project. So let's delete the CDK demo project, which we don't need anymore. Now let's define the contents of app.py and cdk.json files. To begin with, app.py needs these four lines of code, which means we are setting the interpreter here, which is Python 3 in our case. From AWS underscore CDK library, which we installed earlier, we are importing the module called core. And using that core module, I'm actually initializing the construct, which is called app. So as I said earlier, app is the main stack or the root of this application. And if you hover over, you can see this is a class, which is called app with capital A. Now this is a predefined class, which we are going to use. And as you can see here, it's written very clearly that you would normally define an app instance in your program's entry point and then define the constructs wherever you need. So this is going to be the entry point. And then this command will be executed when we run CDK synth. And underneath here, we are going to start defining the stacks when we create them. Now let's define our CDK.json file. It contains the executable, which is Python in this case and the file name is app.py. This file can also be used to define some context variables. I'm using the context variable called project name and environment with values CDK demo and dev respectively. Now this comes handy when you have to define your environment name and your project name in your stacks. Instead of defining them individually in each of the stack, you can define them here and then you can call those variables in your stack. And finally, in the requirements.txt, we are going to install the core module from the CDK library. So that's all we need right now. So once done, you have to install all the modules that you defined in the requirements.txt. You can use the command pip install r requirements.txt. It will install all the modules that you defined there. So right now we just have core defined. And since my system has most of these modules already installed, but if you're installing it for the first time, you will see a different message. Now that we have the project set up, we will keep defining the stacks later on. So that's it for now and thanks for watching. Now that we have set up our project structure, we need to start creating the stacks. In the stacks directory, you can create a file called vpc underscore stack.py. And this is the file where I will be defining my 
VPC stack. So starting from the top, I'm importing two modules here. One is EC2 and the other is core from the CDK library. EC2 module is required to create VPC and its components. And then I'm defining a class called VPC stack. In this class, I have defined a constructor. But the constructor means that whenever we create the instance of this class, whatever we define in this constructor, that will be executed by default. So you don't have to call this constructor explicitly. So now I'm going to define my two context variable. The first is the project name. Use the keyword self dot node dot try get context and the variable name which was project underscore name and the second was environment again using the self keyword node dot get context and the variable name was env so now you have your project name and environment name imported in your stack you can use these values wherever it makes more sense now let's create a new variable by the name vpc and use ec2 module dot vpc now we have to define the scope here which is going to be self in most of the cases and then we have to define the id let's call it a dev vpc now id is going to be the logical id which is used by cloud formation when it's going to create the resources so believe it or not if you have to define a simple default vpc using cdk that's all that you need to write it will take up the default arguments and it's gonna create a vpc in your aws account what we have done so far we have defined the class but now we have to create the instance of that class so that whatever we have defined here inside the constructor that will be executed now that's where our app.py is going to be used so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to import the vpc stack so from stacks.vpc stack import this is the class name and then I'm going to create the object of this stack. So let's call VPC stack. And the main entry point is app and then name of the stack, which is called VPC. You can keep any name here. So this is the name that will appear in your AWS CloudFormation service. So what we have done so far, we have defined a class and this is the default definition of the VPC. Of course, we are going to change it later. But what I'm trying to explain here is if you just want a simple default VPC just for study purpose or for experimental purpose, this is just the one line of code that you need. And here you have to import the stack and create the object of the class. Now, once we are done with this, go to your terminal and type cdkls. So right now you can see we have one stack which is called VPC and this is what we have defined here. Now let's synthesize this stack, run cdk synth and the name of the stack which is VPC. So you can see here it has synthesized whatever code that we have written. Here we have just wrote one line here, that's all, and it has generated the entire CloudFormation template. Now let's take a look what it contains. So it has a resource of type VPC. It has already defined the CIDR for this. And then it has the public subnet one. As you can see here, it has already defined the public subnet for you. It has also set up the CIDR block for this public subnet. And here it has set up the route table for public subnet. And as we know, the public subnet is the one which has internet gateway attached to it. So it must have created internet gateway as well. And here it has set up EIP. So this is required for the NAT gateway. And then it has the definition of private subnets here. You can see this is the private subnet one. And the route table for the private subnet. So you can see just with one line of code, it has basically generated this cloud formation template. So if you are not looking for any customized VPC, then you don't need anything else. Just use this one line of code and deploy the stack that will create the VPC.
but we are going to customize it a bit. We are not going to deploy the default definitions. So it provides you different parameters that you can use to customize your VPC. So first of all, let's set the CIDR block. This is the CIDR block of your VPC. Let's call it maybe 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Next, we define number of AZs we need. So let's call it two. VPC will be created with two availability zones. And then we have to enable DNS host name. So when you set this property to true, it means your VPC will be provisioned with DNS host name option enabled. What it means, well, when you launch any EC2 instance in the public subnets, it comes up with default public DNS. Now, if you set up this thing to true, then you will see there will be a default DNS setup for that EC2 instance. And if you set this property to false, then those default DNS will not be generated for your EC2 instance. And the other property related to DNS is the DNS support. AWS provides a default DNS at the address dot two of any VPC. Now, for example, we have set the CIDR block to 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Now in this address range, 10.0.0.1 will be the gateway address and 10.0.0.2 will be the DNS address. So if we set this parameter to true, it means we will use the AWS provider DNS. And if you set it to false, then you have to provide your own DNS to resolve the host names to IP addresses. Now let's define the subnets for the VPC. There's a parameter called subnet underscore configuration, and it is basically a Python list. So the first we are going to define public subnet. Again, let's use EC2 module dot select subnet configuration. And the first parameter is name, which is of string type. Let's call it public. And the second parameter is subnet type. This is of special type, which is called subnet type. And whenever you have to deal with these special types, you basically have to use that module. So in this case, the module name is EC2 dot look for subnet type and then dot. So here we have default options, public or private. In this case, we want this subnet to be of public type. So select this option and then define the CIDR mask. Let's call it 24. So that's all about defining the public subnet. Now, what is a public subnet? A public subnet is the one which has internet gateway attached with it, which means any resource that you define in the public subnet can access internet and any resource from the internet can access your public resources as well. And the next type of subnet is private subnet. Again, use EC2 dot subnet configuration and let's call it private and the subnet type is going to be ec2 dot subnet type dot private and again CIDR mask is going to be 24. Now this is all about defining a private subnet. A private subnet is a subnet which has a NAT gateway attached with it which means any resource that you define in the private subnet can access the internet, but it cannot be accessed from the internet directly. There's also a third type of subnet which is not commonly used or commonly referred by people, which is an isolator subnet type. So if you again use EC2 module dot subnet configuration, and let's name it isolator, and subnet type is going to be ec2 dot subnet type dot isolator and again set the cider mask to 24. Now what are isolator subnets? Well isolator subnet is a subnet which neither has internet gateway nor NAT gateway attached to it which means any resource that you define in isolator subnet cannot access internet and all those resources cannot be accessed from internet as well. 
So if you really want to learn more about these cool things, some really cool tips and tricks, then you can take a look at my full course on CDK, which is called Ultimate DevOps using AWS CDK. That is based on a serverless project and it addresses lots of best practices. Anyways, in this case, we are not going to define the isolator subnet. We will just stick with public and private subnets. When we define number of availability zones, by default, CDK creates same number of NAT gateways in our VPC, which means it is going to create two NAT gateways by default. And we actually don't really need that unless we are really looking for high availability for NAT gateways. So that makes a lot of sense for your production environment. But if it's dev or if it's just for learning purposes, your sandbox account, then you don't need multiple NAT gateways. So you can specify the property called NAT underscore gateway equals to one, which means it will define just one NAT gateway in your VPC, although you're having two AZs. So that's all about defining a VPC number of AZs and then defining your public and private subnets. So you can see how easy it is to define your VPC and its components. And this is all about defining your resources using Python as your language. And now if you run CDK synth once again, it will synthesize this code, whatever we have written here, into the CloudFormation template. And here you can see it has generated a new template based on the configuration that we have defined. Now one other thing that you need to take a note here is we have defined a public and private subnets, but we haven't defined internet gateway or NAT gateway. So this will be created by CDK itself. We don't have to define that in this definition. So you can see here it has set the name of VPC to dev VPC, which is what we have defined here. And this is our CIDR block for the VPC. And this is the CIDR block for public subnet. You can see slash 24 here. And the name of the public subnet is also defined here, which is public. And similarly, we have the NAT gateway defined here. And the private subnets are also defined. This all looks good. So the next thing that you need to do is to run CDK diff command. And here you have to specify the stack name, which is VPC and the profile, which we defined earlier, and that's called CDK demo. It looks for the current state of this stack, which is VPC in our case. And then it looks for the changes that we have made in this definition. And then it will list out the difference. But in this case, we haven't deployed the stack yet. So it will list out all the changes that will be done as part of this deployment. And you can see it is going to create a VPC, a public subnet, the route table for public subnet, route table association, and then the route definitions, elastic IP, which will be used for NAT gateway and then the NAT gateway resource. So similarly, it has internet gateway and the gateway attachment. So all these resources will be provisioned as part of this deployment. So before you deploy your stack for the first time in your AWS account, you have to bootstrap your environment using CDK. So what it really means, it basically creates an S3 bucket as part of this bootstrapping process. And that contains all the resources that are required for the CDK or for this toolkit's operation. So you can run the command CDK, bootstrap, the profile name, which is CDK demo. So it has started bootstrapping our environment. And as part of this bootstrapping, it is going to create an S3 bucket, which will be used to store the templates and assets like Lambda functions, which will support our deployment process. Although this is not required for all the stacks, but it comes handy when you have to deploy Lambda functions using CDK so that the entire code of your Lambda function can be stored in this bucket, which will be created as part of bootstrap process. So now the bootstrap process has been completed. Let's go to AWS console and see how it looks like. Let's go to CloudFormation service. And you can see here, 
a stack by the name CDK Toolkit has been created. And if you click here, all it contains is this bucket, and this will be used to store the templates or the assets as explained earlier. Now let's get back to the CDK project and deploy VPC stack. To deploy the stack, type the command CDK deploy stack name and the profile, which is going to be CDK demo in this case. So the stack has been deployed successfully. Let's go back to AWS console and take a look at the VPC which got provisioned. So again, go to the CloudFormation service. And you can see here the stack name VPC has been deployed successfully. If you click on this and go to resources, it has created a bunch of resources like VPC, Internet Gateway, public and private subnets, Elastic IP which is used for NAT Gateway, so let's go to the VPC service and select the VPC. So this is the default VPC which is present in every AWS account. And this is the one which we created. And you can see it has the name dev VPC and this is the CIDR block. And going to the subnets, so we have four subnets, two public and two private. And we also have the internet gateway. And we have route tables which are configured by the CDK itself. Now if you click on any public subnet route table and click on routes, you can see the default route is basically forwarded to the internet gateway. And in case of the private subnet, default route goes to the NAT gateway. And click on NAT gateway and you will see we have one NAT gateway defined. So if you do not specify how many NAT gateways that you need, then CDK by default creates same number of NAT gateways as AZs. So you have seen how easy it is to define your VPC and its components in the CDK and then deploy it using CDK itself. Now there may be some situations where you have to pass this VPC information to other stack and there are multiple ways to do that. For example, exporting the resource from this particular stack and then import that in other stack or you can simply refer it using the self keyword. In order to learn all those best practices and all those methods, you can refer my full course on CDK, which is called Ultimate DevOps Using CDK 100% Hands-On. So that will teach you all the possible methods to play around with these stack resources and share them with multiple stacks. And finally, let's see how to delete the stack. For that, you simply have to type the command CDK destroy stack name and then the profile so this will delete the CloudFormation stack and as a result of that all the components will also be deleted so the stack has been deleted successfully so that's all about creating a vpc stack configuring the various options and deploying it and we have also seen that if you want to delete it then you can use cdk destroy command to delete the stack so that's all for now and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to explain how to create S3 stack using CDK. I have created a new file called s3 underscore stack dot py in my stacks directory. In this file, I'm importing AWS underscore S3 module from CDK library. And then I have defined a class called S3 stack and that class contains a constructor and couple of environment variables. Now let's try to fetch account ID as well, which I'm going to use as part of my S3 bucket name. Let's define a variable called account underscore ID. And you can use core module to fetch the account ID. Core dot AWS dot account ID. So this will give you account ID of your AWS account. Now let's create a new bucket and let's define an object called bucket1. And I'm going to use s3 module dot bucket. And then scope of the constructor is self. And here you can pass your logical ID. Let's call it default bucket for example. 
Now, technically, this is all you need to define a default bucket. You don't have to specify any other properties. CDK will just use the default values to create a new bucket in your account. But we are going to define a few more properties here. First thing is the bucket name. And let's call it account ID. And I'm going to use my project name and then my environment name. And then let's call it default bucket. So, this is the way you can use these context variables in the name of your resources. And then let's define the access control, which is also called ACL. Again, S3 dot bucket access control dot. Now, there are multiple ACLs like public underscore read if you want to make your bucket public, and then private, which means it cannot be accessed by outside world. We are going to define bucket owner full control ACL and then set the encryption. Use S3 dot bucket encryption. And here you can have multiple options like KMS, KMS managed, but we are going to use the default one, which is called S3 managed. So now this bucket will be created with default encryption enabled. Now let's define the removal policy. What removal policy means is that if you deploy this stack without setting the removal policy, this means the bucket will be created with default removal policy, which is called retain. It means even if you delete this stack, that will not delete the S3 bucket because by default, the removal policy is set to retain. So we can override that property using core module core dot removal policy dot. So we have retain, which is default, and we also have destroy, which we're going to use here. What it means, if you delete CloudFormation stack, that will also delete the S3 bucket. And then you can block your public access using block public access parameter. And then again, you have to use S3 dot block public access method. You can refer this help which pops up here. It tells you the parameter name, and then it also tells you the type of that parameter. So block public access is the parameter name, and it is of type this block public access. As I explained earlier, when you see these type of parameter types, it means you can get these type of properties or values using that module name. In this case, we have S3 as the module which we have imported, and dot, you can define block public access. And block public access has multiple parameters. The first is block public ACL. And all of these parameters accepts just one type of value, which is Boolean. It means either true or false. So let's set true for block public ACLs and block public policy set to true as well. And then we have ignore public ACLs set to true as well. And restrict public buckets set to true as well. Now, even if you don't define this particular block, by default, all of your buckets are private. But in case you have to configure some of these properties as per your requirements, then this is the way that you can configure it. So that's all about defining a bucket with custom name and S3 managed encryption. Default removal policy is set to destroy. And then we have also configured a bunch of public access parameters. Now let's get back to our main file, which is app.py, and import the stack. And now create the object of that stack. Let's call it S3 underscore stack. And the template name is S3. So now we have created the object of the stack. Let's go back to our terminal and list out all the stacks that we have. So we have two stacks now. One is S3, the other is VPC. Let's synthesize the S3 stack. So it has generated the CloudFormation template for S3 bucket. So you can see here the resource type is S3 bucket. And these are the properties that we have defined. This is the encryption property. 
and let's go ahead and run cdk diff on this stack so cdk diff tells you that this particular stack is going to create one resource which is of type s3 bucket that looks good and let's go ahead and deploy the stack So the stack has been deployed successfully. Let's also check the requirements.txt. So here I have added a couple of more lines. One is for EC2, other is for S3. So you have to import both of these modules as part of your project. And as I said earlier, you can import multiple modules here, and then you have to install that using pip command. Now let's go to AWS console and verify the S3 bucket. Let's go to CloudFormation service first. And you can see we have a new stack here called S3. Click on resources. So this is the new bucket which got created. Click on this. So the name of our bucket starts with account ID, followed by the project name, then the environment name, and then the default bucket string. And if you go to properties, You can see default encryption is enabled on this bucket. And going to permissions, you can see all of the public access has been blocked. Now let's get back to our CDK project. So as you can see here, we have defined the removal policy to be destroyed. So if I delete the stack, let's see if the bucket gets deleted as well or not. So go ahead and run CDK destroy S3 and profile is CDK demo. So the stack has been destroyed successfully. Let's go to AWS console and verify it. Let's go to CloudFormation service first. And here you can see we don't have S3 stack anymore. And going to S3 service, you can see that the bucket that we created has been deleted. So this bucket there is part of the CDK bootstrapping, but the bucket that we created earlier as part of S3 stack has been deleted, which confirms that if you set your removal policy to destroy, it will delete the bucket whenever you delete CloudFormation template. So now we have seen how to create S3 buckets using CDK. We have also seen how to create multiple stacks and add those stacks in your CDK project. You can use CDK ls command to list out all the stacks which are defined in your CDK project. And then based on whatever stack that you want to deploy, you can use CDK deploy command to deploy that particular stack. And I have also explained how you can define and import the stacks in app.py file, which is our main application file. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks and congratulations for making it through. Let's quickly summarize what we have covered in this course. We begin with understanding CDK concepts, followed by CDK installation. We also learned how to set up AWS credentials. Then we went through with basic CDK commands. Now we also have idea about CDK bootstrapping. And finally, we deployed VPC and S3 stacks to AWS. This is really a building block course on CDK. If you are willing to learn more about CDK based on a fully hands-on project, then do check out the bonus section of this course. Thanks again and have a good luck.